Hello everyone. I want to talk to you about a lesson that I learnt quite a long time ago now about the importance and the power of prayer. Over 20 years ago when I first came to this diocese, Belinda and Joshua and Claire, Joshua was nine and Claire was just six, needed to stay in Dunedin from uh, the July when I was ordained uh, right through until uh, the end of the year to finish the school year off. So I was invited by the De La Salle brothers, a Roman Catholic order who ran uh, Francis Douglas College, a, a school, a secondary school in New Plymouth for boys, uh, to go and live with them in the brothers community. And so I lived with seven brothers and one priest. And it's the priest who was the parish chaplain that I want to tell you about and something that he told me once about prayer. Now Dave had been sent, Father Dave had been sent to the college to be the chaplain after he'd been diagnosed with lung cancer and had a lung removed. Uh, his bishop of the day uh, thought that it would be a good place to convalesce and uh, to perhaps see out his days. He wasn't expected to live long. Uh, that a, a boys school and being the chaplain of a boys school would be a good place to go to. Now while I was there we celebrated some 25 years of Dave being the chaplain at Francis Douglas. He was much loved and he was a great character. He used to drive around uh, on his mobile scooter, uh, usually with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Uh, in fact, it was only when he had to go on to oxygen almost full time that he was finally persuaded that um, a live flame, cigarettes and oxygen were not a good mix. Over the course of that six months, on at least two occasions, the local parish priest was called in to give Dave the last rites because he wasn't expected to live through the night. But somehow he just seemed to bounce back. But on this particular occasion, and by this time, Belinda and the children had moved up and we were in rented accommodation. I was called to the college by the head of the community, uh, Brother Bill, who told me that he was really pretty sure that Dave was dying. Uh, and that he wanted to see me. I went up, I went into his little room, and he was asleep, sitting there with the oxygen on, uh, and his breviary on his knees. I sat beside him until he woke up, and I said, oh, you've been saying your prayers, Father. And he said, yes, he said, I don't know where I would have been if it hadn't been for prayer. He then went on to tell me about the time when he was a parish priest in Reefton, and he was sent a young priest. The bishop was concerned about this young priest who seemed to be losing his way a little bit in terms of his vocation. And he thought that Dave could help. In the course of many conversations, at one point, Dave asked this young priest, so Father, tell me about your prayer life. And this young priest said, well, actually, I don't pray. I don't believe in prayer. Dave, who tended to call a spade a shovel, said, what the hell do you mean? Uh, you don't believe in prayer. And he said, well, why tell God what God already knows? Uh, Dave said, so I said to this young priest, but that's not the point. It's not what God knows. It's what you know, Father. And prayer is a way that you can come to know what it is that you know. He then went on to describe to me what his own experience of prayer had been. He said, you know, Bishop, prayer for me has been about going down deep, going down deep inside myself and facing my sinfulness, my regrets, my joys, my gratitude, facing every aspect of who I am, what I've been and what I can be. And what I've discovered is that when you go down deep, what you glimpse is what God sees. And what God sees is someone deeply loved. Someone made in God's image in spite of all the things that I might do or all the things that I say that I might regret. God sees me as a beloved child and wants nothing more than the deepest of relationships with me. That's the power of prayer, he said. Go down deep.
come to understand yourself. He went on to say, and so I told this young priest that to be someone who cared for the souls of others, you have to be a person who's been on that journey yourself, who's faced in to yourself, who has discovered that they are beloved of God and that so is every other human being. Then he said, you can be a pastor, a pastor with the care of the souls uh, of another. Well, that was an important lesson for me. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.